Malcolm, I cannot believe that all the years you and I have been in the business. Okay. Malcolm, I cannot believe that all the years both of us have been in the business we have not met before this. Well, it's remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> yes. There is still somebody in this business that we haven't met. So. <laughs> anyway. That's what keeps us interested. Right. It's lovely to have a chance to meet you and talk with you. And I do think that Blue Thunder is going to be one of the big hits of the summer season. I'm glad you said it. I didn't have to. Uh, right. No, okay. I think uh, it's action and adventure and all. I, I'm curious, from an actor's point of view, do you ever get to feeling that a movie like Blue Thunder, with all the hardware and all mm -hmm. the action and all that, that uh, it's more difficult for you to get your character together? No. I never compete, though, with children, animals, or hardware. Um, I support them, you know. Um, I don't try and compete with them because there's no way of comp comp competing with that trio. Um, and I think that they, uh, I think the actually in this film, interestingly enough, the hardware enhances and, and makes the film really exciting, of course, and, and it's basically about that. But I do think that the performances from everybody universally in the movie are of a very high caliber. And um, of course, Roy Scheider is wonderful in it. Danny Stern is extremely good. Candy Clark. And I, I'd like to mention Warren Oates, who unfortunately, this is, was his last movie. Poor dear man. But uh, I think it's a good testament to his life. And I think he's marvelous in this film. Great sense of humor. And, and uh, I, I love Warren. I, I got, it's the first time I met him and worked with him. He said to me when I met him, you know, he said, um, well, he said, like, we got something in common, you and I. And uh, he said, Vickery Turner. Now, that was a wife of his who was a girlfriend of mine when I was in acting school. You know? <laughs> I said, well, there you go, there you go. <laughs> And uh, he used to sit in my trailer all day watching uh, the Wall Street thing, you know, these little numbers. Coming. I came, I'd go off to do a shot, I'd come back two hours later, and he's still there looking at this thing. I'd say, Warren, what are you, why don't you watch uh, Tom and Jerry or something? He said, uh, I said, do you actually take in uh, all these numbers? He said, no, no. He said, but I, I suddenly perk up when I hear something that's mine. <laughs> So there you are. But he was a wonderful man. God bless him. Yes, he was. I, I knew him slightly. And, he and was. a great actor. Yes. A great actor. And he went out on a high. So, he did. He know, did. He did. can be grateful for that. Yeah. I wonder, uh, looking at the film and your role, you're such a mean guy in it. Uh, but I wonder um, why they chose you, a Britisher, a Briton, mm -hmm. uh, because you're playing a guy who flew choppers in Vietnam. Now, uh, what, what's the story there? Hey, I was one of the unlucky Britons that was sent to Vietnam. I don't know. I'm, I, think, I think that, uh, I mean, you'll have to really ask the executives at Columbia why they asked me to do it. I don't really know why. Um, I guess they just wanted the meanest man they could find. And so um, I guess that's why they came to me. I don't know. Um, I don't think it really matters really where he's from or anything. And I, Because in the story, I'm the sort of pilot of this very special Blue Thunder plane uh, helicopter. So I don't think it's, um, it makes that much difference, really. I mean, I think you accept it, you know. So it's all right. At least I speak. I mean, English, uh, so that people don't have to, they can understand what I'm saying, you know. Even in Arkansas, they understand what I say. That's where my wife's from, so yes. I know I'm all right. Your wife, Mary Steenburgen, yes. who had to lose her southern accent. She lost her southern accent, and then she had to get it back for her latest picture called Cross Creek that she did with Marty Ritt. And um, I've got a small part in it at the end, and I play an American in that, so... So I just lower the register and say, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> you now um, make your home in the U.S. Yes. And uh, ha are you a U.S. citizen, or do you plan to be? No, but I am in my heart. I don't have the papers. I don't want the papers, actually. All I do is they have a thing called alien registration, which every Mexican is his goal in life, is to get this green card. and. Um, I got my green card, which means I pay my taxes to Uncle Sam. I don't have the opportunity, unfortunately, to fight in a war for Uncle Sam or vote. So I got a pretty good deal out of it, really. So um, I still keep my British passport. And we have a house in London, and we go there from time to time. And I have family there, of course. But um, my philosophy has always been one akin 
to the American philosophy and way of life, really, even when I was living in England and never, had never been to America. What is that philosophy? Um, free spirit, free enterprise. If you work hard and have talent and are given the opportunity, given luck, you can do it. It doesn't matter who your parents were. In England, it's all to do with class, you know. Even yet? Oh, yes, even yet, yes, even yet. I thought the Beatles changed all that. They helped, they helped. It was good, good for the English to have that, those accents uh, around the place for a while, and it was very popular to have come from Liverpool. I am from Liverpool, actually, and I remember seeing them as the Silver Beatles at, in the Cavern Club. So I have that distinction. Not many people, you know, saw them when they were called the Silver Beatles. And did you think they would ever be world famous? I'd never make an agent. I hadn't got a clue. I thought, what a rowdy group that is. You know. <laughs> Boy. But we, I was drawn to them. I went to see them every Friday night when they were there. They, were, and it, they had great raw energy. They were wonderful, actually. And the scruffy kids made good. Yes, they certainly didn't do too badly. Well, Malcolm, you're not at all scruffy. I've admired your work for years, and it really is, after all these years, a pleasure to get to know you and meet you. Thank you very much. And congratulations on a really wonderful performance in Thank Blue you. Thunder. Thank you very much indeed. Come to Texas to see it. I, well, I will. <laughs> Next time we go to Arkansas, we stop off at Dallas Airport. Wonderful. I know the gift shop well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Now, if I'm... <laughs> and questions, please. Does all the hardware and all the action tend to get in the way of what the actor is trying to do? What is the rationale for this Britisher who flew choppers in Vietnam? Did anyone ever explain to you why they chose you, a Briton, to play this chopper pilot in Vietnam? Uh, and, um, What is your favorite recollection of Warren Oates? And okay. What is this American philosophy you mention? What does the American philosophy mean to you? I thought the Beatles changed all that. That should do it. Great. Oh, all right. Okay. 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 Uh, all right. No, I'm over here. Okay. Okay. Well, Malcolm, thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you and talking with you. Good. Thank you.